video the six crucial facts about the treatment for CKD that most doctors still get wrong. Catherine here, I've been working with kidney disease patients for more than a decade now and I've met too many patients who lost their kidneys due to poor choices made by their doctors. It's time to put an end to this. The medical world needs to do a big step forward when it comes to managing kidney disease. Too many doctors still go by old, outdated principles and this is putting the health of 30 million CKD patients in danger. But how can you make sure you are not risking your kidneys due to your doctor's mistakes? Well, there are six questions you should ask your doctor at your next scheduled appointment. If you get too many wrong answers, find another doctor. And I'm serious on this. If your goal is to improve your CKD, you will need a team effort. And while I've seen patients get better even without the help of their doctors, trust me when I say that you don't want to do everything by yourself here. So let's take a look at the six questions you should ask the next time you see your doctor or your nephrologist. Number six, do I have a chance of improving my GFR with lifestyle changes? Okay, let's start with a key question. There are two kinds of doctors in the world. Those that will tell you that CKD is a disease that cannot be reversed and those that know what they are talking about. Because while it was believed for decades that CKD is not reversible, today many studies are proving that the opposite is true. Today, it is a proven scientific fact that kidney disease patients can improve their GFR numbers by making the right dietary lifestyle choices and by receiving the proper medical treatment. But guys, the problem here is that the amount of knowledge someone must empower in order to achieve the result of improving their GFR number is huge. It's a lot more than what most patients have. Look, the human body is an incredibly complex machine. It has a huge amount of components, all of which must move in harmony. If even a single cog ceases to turn, your whole progress stops. This is why you must make sure that your doctor is guiding you in the right direction. There is no improving if you are driving with one foot on the accelerator and one on the brake pedal. This is why at your next doctor appointment, you should ask, do I have a chance of improving my GFR with the correct lifestyle changes? And pay close attention to the answer you get. This is not a dialysis sentence anymore today and your doctor should know this. Up next, the next question you should be asking even if you got the wrong answer to the first one is Number 5. Am I getting checked for vitamin deficiencies? Okay, here is something not many doctors will tell you about. Many commonly prescribed medications will have vitamin and nutrient deficiencies as a side effect. Actually, some studies are pointing out that many side effects of medications could be avoided if only certain vitamins were prescribed alongside the medication. I'll give you a quick example. Many patients take a statin for their cholesterol, right? And when they take these medications, they start to have muscle pain, sometimes very strong muscle pain. Then they go to their doctors and they say, yeah, it's the statin. Nothing we can do about that. What they don't know is that the statin is not directly causing muscle pain. The statin is lowering your CoQ10 levels in the muscles, which will in turn cause muscle pain. But there is a lot that could be done about that. I mean, you could supplement CoQ10. But this is not the most dangerous vitamin deficiency CKD patients should be checked for. First of all, there is vitamin D. Up to 84.7% of kidney disease patients have low levels of this vitamin. If you are not being checked for vitamin D levels, be very worried. 
Remember that just taking a supplement is not always enough to keep vitamin D level in the right range for CKD patients. Same for vitamin B12, especially if you have diabetes and you are taking metformin. Always make sure you are getting checked for vitamin B12 levels. Just supplementing this vitamin may not be enough. Why you may ask? Because as we can see here, metformin, which is a first line treatment for diabetes, can cause vitamin B12 depletion. But how many doctors do prescribe regular tests for vitamin deficiencies when prescribing these medications? Now guys, this I have on screen right now is a long list of vitamin deficiencies that can be caused by common medications. This is why you should ask your doctor, am I getting checked for vitamin deficiencies? Up next, a question that for a CKD patient is even more important than vitamin deficiencies. Question you should ask your doctor number four. Doctor, do you know that anemia exists? So do doctors know about anemia, a common complication of CKD? Well, they should. I mean, how are you even going to go through medical school without learning about anemia? Which is a condition that, by the way, affects up to three out of four CKD patients, depending on stage. And that wreaks havoc inside the kidneys, at the point that it's impossible to improve your GFR numbers if you let anemia unchecked. And this is incredibly worrying because anemia is a condition that's extremely treatable. You will just need to supplement iron, B vitamins, and to take erythropoiesis stimulating agents, ESA in short. These are medications such as epoetin or darbepoetin, by the way. So up to 3 out of 4 CKD patients have anemia. But do you know what percentage of CKD patients take the life-saving ESA? Less than 4%. This is frightening because this is the data from a study that examined more than 5 million CKD patients. Worst part is that this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, some doctors will first tell their patients that CKD is not treatable or right and then will effectively not treat anemia, a condition that will make CKD get much worse, making dialysis inevitable. Thus, fulfilling their initial prophecy. I mean, Sometimes, I almost think some doctors don't care about their patients and they just want the dialysis clinic to be always full. Now the funny part, I mean, if it wasn't incredibly scary and unsettling. So what's funny is that some doctors said that they stopped testing iron levels in CKD patients because all the tests came back positive. So it was clear that CKD was causing the issue. What was the point of keeping checking patients for anemia? No, I'm not making this up. This is what a recent article published on Medscape says about the issue. According to the author of this article, and I quote, when physicians see CKD patients with anemia, they often make the assumption that the cause is anemia of CKD and thus they do not check iron levels. I mean, are you reading what I'm reading? This is like saying that your airline pilot for today is not going to check with the control tower if there are other planes on the strip before landing because they don't care. So they are just going to crash the plane and call it a day. Now guys, there is only one good thing about all this mess. That you can go to your doctor and unless you know for sure that your iron level is in check, you can ask your doctor, am I getting tested for anemia? Am I receiving the appropriate treatment? Because the answer to this question will tell you a lot about your doctor. Remember, there is no stopping kidney disease if anemia is not getting treated. Now, the next question is going to be a hard one for your doctor, but it's also going to give you a huge insight into their ability to treat you. Let's see the next question you should ask your doctor or your nephrologist. Number three, are the medications I am taking for my blood pressure safe? 
Okay guys, we have seen a kidney saving medication that most doctors forget to give to their patients. Let's take a look now at a class of medications that's incredibly dangerous for CKD patients and that doctors are prescribing to everyone. I'm talking about your ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril, enalipril and so on and also ARBs such as Losartan, Volsartan and so on. These are also known as Sartans. Now guys, it's incredibly important for kidney patients to know if they are taking one or more of these extremely common medications. And also, you should know if the dosage you take is high or low. Because you see, ACE inhibitors and ARBs have some very serious side effects while they are supposed to protect your kidneys. Studies have found out that they may cause your kidney function to decline at a faster pace. At the point that, especially in patients in the advanced stages of kidney disease, discontinuing these medications may actually improve kidney function. Now, this is not my opinion, obviously. This comes from a study recently published on a peer-reviewed medical journal. And this is not all. For some patients, taking these medications may cause very rapid decline in kidney function called acute kidney injury. This can only be stopped when the medication is suspended. Now guys, there are many factors that may make taking ACE inhibitors and ARBs good or very bad for you. Diabetes status, stage of CG, dehydration, other medications taken, proteinuria and more. And your doctor should know all about this in theory. This is why you should ask them, are the medications I am taking for my blood pressure safe? If the answer you get from your doctor is not the right one, get informed as soon as possible. And I've recently made a video just about this topic. You can watch it so you will be able to make sure these medications are not damaging your kidneys. It's up here and also down in description. By the way, there is another issue that these medications are very likely to cause you. It's a problem that will influence the foods you will be able to eat. This brings us to our question number two. Now guys, let's talk about the diet for a moment. You probably already know very well that the diet is the cornerstone of the treatment for CKD, but not all doctors are informed enough about the diet. This is why a lot of kidney patients nowadays are still being told to avoid foods such as bananas, tomatoes, spinach, avocados, potatoes, citrus fruits, and more foods rich in potassium. If this describes you, there is a very important question you should be asking to your doctor. Question, am I taking medications that are causing my high potassium level? Now this is a trick question, right? Since you already know the answer, given that you are watching this video, the way your doctor will answer the question will tell you exactly how prepared your doctor actually is. Let me explain. We know today that if a CKD patient has two high potassium levels, the most likely cause is the overuse of one of these medications, ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril, enalipril, and so on, and also ARBs such as losartan, volsartan, and so on. These are not the only cause, but they are the very first thing a good doctor should check if a CKD patient is having too high serum potassium levels. So if you have this issue and you have been avoiding bananas and potatoes for years while taking one of the medications on this list, time to ask this question to your doctor. Am I taking medications that are causing my high potassium level? See how they answer. Write down what they say. Because as I was saying, CKD patients are not supposed to follow a low potassium diet by default anymore. All right? The cause of the issue should be investigated and resolved. And the way your doctor does this will tell you a lot about their ability to take care of you. Up next, number one, this is going to be the most important question everyone should be asking their doctors and dietitians because it's all about your diet. So this is probably more a question for your renal dietitian and you should make sure you are getting the correct answer to this one because otherwise nothing is going to work. If this part of your regimen isn't working, you can take the best medications and you can have the best doctor in the world but they won't be able to help you. 
So the most important question is, is my protein intake being monitored correctly? Okay guys, this question implies that you are following a renal diet made for you by a renal dietitian and that's because you need a proper renal diet in order to stop CKD. The reason is protein intake. This is very important. A renal diet must provide an exact daily amount of protein, all right? 0.55 to 0.60 gram per kilograms per day of protein for non-diabetics and 0.60 to 0.8 grams per kilograms per day of protein for diabetics. This is a hard rule that every single CKD patient stage 3 to 5 pre-dialysis must follow. I mean, if their goal is to avoid ending up in renal failure. So let's say that you are following a proper renal diet and you want to make sure your diet is going to work. Your top priority here is to make sure that you are not getting too much protein nor too little protein. Because if your protein intake is, for example, too low compared to what you see here, you risk malnutrition, even protein energy wasting. This is not very common except for older, more frail patients, but everyone should make sure their protein intake is right. Because if your protein intake is too high, on the other hand, you risk a faster progression of kidney disease. And this is why you want a competent dietitian to help you get this right. And again, it's a lot more common to get too much protein. When studies were done on CKD patients that were on a low protein diet while being monitored by a renal dietitian, most patients were found to overshoot their target for protein intake. And this led to a loss of kidney function. This is why this last question is the most important. Now guys, if you want to learn more about how to plan and follow a renal diet, this video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.